All right, everyone, get ready, because today we're taking a deep dive into some truly stunning landscapes, the kind of places that make you want to just lace up your hiking boots and go. We're talking about Ireland, you know, rolling green hills, those dramatic cliffs you always see in pictures. Oh, and maybe pack a rain jacket. Well, a little rain never hurt anyone, right? Especially with a great walk ahead of you. You've got that right. And thankfully, we have travel enthusiast Edwin Fitzmaurice as our guide today. She actually put together an awesome list of 15 autumn walks in Ireland, ones she says are worth braving a little weather for, so that's what we're diving into. Yeah, and it's not even just a simple list. Fitzmaurice really gets into it, hmm. you know? What I mean is she has these really vivid descriptions and all these unique details. It's like she bottled up the essence of each place. I totally agree. So our mission today is to help you figure out what your perfect Irish trek is. Like, are you all about the history, those breathtaking views, or just that peaceful nature escape? Whatever calls to you, we'll try to find it. Exactly. It's like finding your own personal connection to the landscape. I love that. And luckily, Fitzmaurice gives us tons of options. Straight off the bat, she mentions Fernhill Gardens. It's in Dublin. Now, this one's only about 2.3 kilometers, so on the shorter side. But she talks about this amazing variety of plants there. Rhododendrons, camellias, like a secret garden in the city. And that's a good reminder that a rewarding walk doesn't have to be like marathon distance. Yeah. Sometimes it's about appreciating the small stuff, the little details. Oh, absolutely. But I will say, for me... When I picture Ireland, it's those wild landscapes, you know, mm -hmm. windswept and rugged. And Fitzmaurice gets that. She takes us to Eris Head in County Mayo, part of the wild Atlantic way. Can you imagine standing on the edge of Ireland, wind in your hair, just looking out at that vast ocean? It's such a powerful image. And, you know, walking that coastline at Eris Head, you might even come across, well, remnants of those World War II lookout posts. Think about the history there. It's like these hidden layers of history just add another dimension, right? It's like stepping back in time. And speaking of history, how about this for an intriguing name? Stairway to Heaven. It's in County Cavan, and it totally caught my eye. What's the story there? Well, it sounds like it lives up to the name, you know, with amazing views at the top. Fitzmaurice describes all these steps, almost like a staircase leading you up. Oh, and she mentions it's actually part of a UNESCO Global Geopark. Now, hold on, UNESCO Global Geopark. What does that even mean? So basically it means you're walking through this landscape that's really significant geologically. You think unique rock formations, maybe fossils, things like that. It's like a glimpse into millions of years of history. So not only do you have that stairway to heaven climb, but you're also surrounded by all these natural wonders. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, so we've got natural beauty, we've got history, we've got geology. Is there anything this list doesn't have? Well, if you're into legends, then Nocneria in County Sligo has that for you. Fitzmaurice mentions the top, the summit of this hill, is said to be where Queen Maeve is buried. She's a legendary figure from Irish mythology. Okay, you had me at legendary figure. Tell me more. Oh, she's a fascinating one, Queen Maeve. A fierce warrior queen, shrouded in all this, like, myth and mystery. Some stories say she was a super powerful ruler. Others say she was more, you know, a tragic figure. And when you're standing up there on Nocneria, lined all around you, looking out at everything... It's almost like you can feel her presence there. Chills. Literal chills. Yeah. It's amazing, though, how these walks kind of bring everything together. The history, the myths, the beauty of it all. But as much as I love the idea of conquering mountains and feeling like an ancient queen, I'll admit I do like my creature comforts. Anything for those of us who maybe prefer a gentler pace. Absolutely. Fitzmaurice gets that. She includes walks like Juice. It's in County Wicklow. It's got this boardwalk. So even if it's a bit damp, you're good to go. Music to my ears. Boardwalks always equal happy hikers. Yeah. But, I mean, accessibility is more than just, like, avoiding muddy boots, right? It's also about finding a walk that fits your level, how comfortable you feel. Exactly. And Fitzmaurice, she's good about giving you those details. Like, she describes the fairy castle loop in the Dublin mountains and says it's a pretty easy one, popular with families, casual walkers. Or maybe you're someone who wants the opposite, like real solitude. You know, being totally immersed in nature. Fitzmaurice has you covered there, too. There's the Ocris Head Walk. It's in County Sligo, known for being really tranquil, stunning coastal views. Oh, and it starts and ends at a pub. No, that's what I'm talking about. Enjoy that Irish coastline, then treat yourself to a nice meal. Perfect combo. Speaking of treats, remember how Fitzmaurice mentioned those amazing views you get coming down from Juice? I love how she highlights those payoff moments, the stuff that makes all the effort worth it. 
Totally. It's that anticipation, knowing something incredible is waiting for you. Like the Arklo Rock Walk, it ends at this beach. The cove, Fitzmaurice was saying it's like a haven for people who love to swim in the ocean. Sign me up for that. Oh. All right, but let's talk atmosphere for a second. <laughs> I'm a sucker for places with a sense of history, you know, little magic in the air. <laughs> Fitzmaurice really captures that with the Ballyfad Woods Walk. She mentions how this forest has some of the oldest oak trees in all of Ireland. Can you imagine? <laughs> Just standing there amongst those giants. Like stepping back in time, right? And that connection to the past, it's even stronger with a walk like the Sly of Liag that's in County Donegal. Oh, yeah. The Cliffs of Moher's lesser known but equally stunning, well, cousin. I've heard they're breathtaking. Absolutely spectacular. Fitzmaurice actually points out that Sly of Liag has some of the highest sea cliffs in all of Europe. Higher even than the Cliffs of Moher. But it's more than just the size. It's the history. It's part of the pilgrim's path, a route people have walked for centuries. So it's not just the views. It's like you're walking in the footsteps of history. So cool. Yeah. Okay, bro, I have chills, but for real this time. And if you're looking for romance, Fitzmaurice has that covered too. She says Devil's Glen in County Wicklow is one of the most romantic walks on the whole list. Picture this. Secluded waterfall, love poem carved into the rocks, like a fairy tale. Okay, that's it. Devil's Glen is going on my bucket list right now. And you know what would make it even better? My dog. Speaking of, I know we've got lots of dog-loving listeners. Any recommendations for bringing your furry friend along on an Irish adventure? For sure. Fitzmaurice actually mentions a few dog-friendly walks. The one that stands out is the Ballycotton Cliff Walk in County Cork. She makes it sound so idyllic, you and your pup walking these dramatic cliffs, maybe even spotting dolphins out in the water. Now that's what I call a walk with a view. And get this, she mentions this walk ends at a beach, perfect for picnics. Which got me thinking, if you had to pack like the ultimate picnic basket, what would you put in it? And on which one of these amazing Irish walks would you eat it? Ooh, that's tricky. It's like picking a favorite. Yeah, right. right. They're all so unique. I'm picturing myself at Doc Maria. Some good, strong Irish tea in a thermos, maybe some soda bread, sitting there looking out at the countryside where Queen Maeve used to rule. Can you imagine? Oh, definitely. But part of me is also like craving the drama of those cliffs, like the cliffs of Moher. Imagine finishing that Doolin cliff walk, feeling the sea spray, and then finding a spot to have a picnic as the sun sets over the Atlantic. Some smoked salmon sandwiches, a bit of Kerrygold cheese. Okay, now you're speaking my language. See, that's what I love about Fitzmaurice's writing. She doesn't just tell you about these walks. She makes you feel like you're there. Suddenly, I can practically case the salt air, feel that wind. Exactly. And that's the power of exploration, isn't it? Outward and inward. Even in a country like Ireland, not huge geographically, there's just this incredible range of landscapes, experiences. Makes you realize adventure is never that far away. So true. Whether you're all about those ancient legends or the views or even just a peaceful walk in nature, there's an Irish walk out there for everyone. Exactly. Maybe you'll even be inspired to pack your own picnic basket, go have your own Irish adventure. Now, wouldn't that be something?